bikers, babes, and racing, it's Daytona Bike Week and we've got it covered. It's the next Moto Champion Talk Show brought to you by Yoshimura. Welcome back to another great episode of the Next Moto Champion Talk Show. I'm your host, Danielle Teal, and with a little help from my co-host, John Boucher, we'll get you up to speed on the latest in motorcycle racing. Spring is in the air, and so is the smell of race fuel. That's right, the 2016 motorcycle racing season has officially kicked off with one of the most anticipated annual events, Daytona Bike Week. Yes, right now, as we speak, Cruisers are cruising, choppers are chopping, booths are, well, stretched and dropped, and motorcycle enthusiasts alike are aimlessly parading up and down Daytona International Speedway in an adult version of spring break. But more importantly, also gathering in Daytona are some of the best motorcycle racers in the planet. Taking place this weekend is one of the most historic motorcycle races ever. It's the 75th running of the Daytona 200 sanctioned by ASRA for the second year in a row. Daytona 200 regulars like two-time winner Danny Eslick, Corey West, Jeff May, and Mark Heckles will all be in attendance along with a host of others. I spoke with Moto America's Mark Heckles, who will be running a prepped R6 and feels damn good about his bike and his crew. And when asked about the rest of his 2016 plans, he said he also hopes to run a few select Moto America rounds this season, but says it all depends on how this race goes. As for Corey West, he's chasing club money at Weir Nationals and in Nazra, and he's going to play bounty hunter as he puts it. Good luck to all the entrants. And for more information, it can be found at asraracing.com. Round one of AMA Pro Flat Track is also taking place this weekend. And after the 2015 season came all the way down to the line for front runners Brian Smith and Jared Meese, complete with a face-off, it was Meese who walked away with the championship. But after a much needed off-season, some sporadic racing and riding, and much training for both of them, they're ready to face off once again in 2016. That's why we have them both on this week's Next Moto Champion Talk Show to talk about their off-seasons and going head-to-head -head again in what we hope to be another amazing season. But first, let's take a quick commercial break and thank some sponsors. <laughs> This little beauty here is top of the line. So you just pull like this to go left, and like so to go right. Where are the brakes? I just grab a hold of both and pull straight back. And the whoa is optional. You wouldn't buy a motorcycle without handlebars. No, thanks. And you shouldn't ride a motorcycle without GEICO insurance. Roadside assistance, 24-hour service, great rates. GEICO Motorcycle. See how much you could save. But before we get to our next segment, our very own John Boucher had the opportunity to spend some time at the Yas Marina circuit in Abu Dhabi last week for the Bridgestone Battle Axe S21 tire launch. And for your viewing pleasure, we've put together a three-part mini-series that will air over the next few shows. For more, let's throw it on over to John Boucher. Now that behind me is the Viceroy Hotel. We're here in Abu Dhabi with Bridgestone where they have come to launch their new Battle Axe S21 tire. And we're here to ride the Yas Marina circuit. And for this little journey we've been on, we've broken up into three parts. And today in part one, we've got a 30 second teaser and one full lap around the Yas Marina circuit.
amazing, John. Hope you brought me back something nice, and I'm sure he didn't. And now let's get back to John Boucher for this week's Product Spotlight. In this week's Product Spotlight, we're bringing you this Speedway Shelter. I actually found the Speedway Shelter in Baltimore, Maryland after a huge snowstorm. I was at a friend's house. He said, hey, I want to show you my bike. He took me outside under this huge pile of snow. Uh, he had his motorcycle parked in a Speedway Shelter. And to be honest, I had never seen one before. And so he pulls the shelter back and he shows me the bike. And I was like, man, that's an awesome motorcycle, but that's also a great shelter. Where did you get it? And that's how we found the Speedway Shelter. So what you have right here is what we've taken out of the box. We ordered one, uh, we brought it here. We want to see how long it takes us to put it together uh, and exactly how easy it is to open and close the thing. So when you look at what came in the box, you know, we start at the top with uh, the heavy duty cover that it comes with. There's a base plate. There's three of these rounded bars. There's a, a directions book. Isn't that cute? Um, and then there's uh, these three squared bars. We've got two folding compartments, two connecting rods, a light, and it also comes with a bag of bolts in case you want to uh, drill this down to a, uh, a wood platform. All of this fits into this travel bag in case you want to take it somewhere with you. So underneath this, what you see right here is the uh, Diamond Sport mat. This one runs about 100 bucks, and it's going to keep a lot of dirt and, and dust off your bike as you roll it in and out of the Speedway Shelter. So we're going to put this thing together. We're going to see exactly how long it's going to take, and then we'll be back to show you how easy it is to pull a bike in and out of it. All right, let's see what we got. 11 minutes, not bad for something uh, uh, this size and, and for a shelter piece like this. And the reason that you saw me in there for a while is because there's Velcro straps that attach to each and every bar, good lengthy uh, amounts of, of Velcro uh, that are gonna really hold this thing down and keep it protected from the wind. One of the things I noticed while I was putting it together too is this underside is waterproof, uh, extremely thick and very durable. And we've got a couple windows on the side. So if you're in a spot where you feel like you, you need to uh, have some ventilation going through, then it has a possibility for ventilation as well. Now, earlier I threw out the instructions. I don't know why they put them in the box because this thing is no tools required. I just put the whole thing together. There's a couple screw bolts that you do by hand and that's about it. But this thing was, was pretty easy. Um, let's see how easy it is to slide a bike in and close it. Man, that was easy. Um, these Speedway shelters are gonna range from that 325 to 425 mark. Again, the mat uh, is extra, it's about 100 bucks extra. I think it's well worth the investment. This is something that's gonna work well for you outside. It's gonna keep the rain and snow and even the sun off your motorcycle. But then if you wanna bring it inside your garage, clean your bike, roll it into the Speedway shelter, it's gonna keep the dust off, it's gonna keep it pristine clean the next time you're ready to pull out and go for a ride. So that's the Speedway shelter from speedwayshelters.com and that's this week's Product Spotlight. We'll be right back after this commercial break with our first guest, Brian Smith. That's a Bridgestone Ecopia. I've never seen them out in the wild like this. It's young, too. They're very young. We're here studying the behavior of Bridgestone's fuel-efficient Ecopia tires in their natural setting. They can help you save up to $450 in gas over their lifetime. What? Holy smokes, that's a great deal. <sighs> great. You scared it away. Oh. Start going green and saving some green. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion.
And we're back. He made history by taking the win in flat track at X Games last year and was the second overall in GNC 1 in 2015. He's Michigan born, Michigan raised, and proud of it. It's the number 42, Brian Smith. Welcome to the show. Hi, uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So obviously we're going to talk about the 2016 season, but first we want to talk about what you've been doing in your off season. Get us up to speed. Oh, uh, just training and getting ready for the season. It was a really short off season uh, with the last race in Vegas being what mid November. So before we knew it, it was the new year and uh, it was time to get ready. Um, I was fortunate enough to celebrate new years with uh, my good buddy, kid rock and stay up all night and uh, do things that I can't talk about. <laughs> Just kidding. No, but it was a good time ring in the new year. Then it was time to get to work. And uh, we've been down here in Daytona for a week now practicing and uh, ready to go. Ready to go. So let's let's get caught up. 2015 uh, was up and down for you. You had a couple of misses, but a couple of big wins as well. So wrap it up for, for the fans. Yeah, it struggled really bad last year in Daytona. Um, it's a tough track for everybody and uh i had a really really bad uh, go last year so i was playing catch up all year but started winning right off the bat and got back in the points race uh won five nationals which is over double everybody else um so it was good it's a great season but at the end of the year we come up uh short in the points and ended up second again so it uh i wasn't happy with it even five wins x games gold it sucks when you're still like bummed about not winning so I got to win more this year. Got to win, and it was your five wins, I think, to Jared Mises' one win uh, at the end of the season. So let's talk about that. Um, the end of the season kind of came to a head at Vegas, uh, the final round of the year, like you mentioned. Talk about that face-off, that final face-off with Jared and how that's going to um, roll over into the 2016 season. Yeah, there's a little bit of drama there. Short tracks aren't my specialty, even though I've won a short track and he never has, so... It was like kind of weird situation, indoor, little small track, smallest track there's ever been a Grand National flat track on in history. So it was just a mess, really. Um, I wasn't happy with uh, the AMA for promoting that, but whatever. Um, you know, he, he got the better of me there this year. The, the final race is a mile, so I think the ball's in my court this year. Um, you know, everything come to a head in Vegas. Um, you know, and racing's racing. He he beat me straight up. Um, there was drama behind all that, but we're gonna we're gonna make it happen this year with uh, the mile being the final race. I think it's gonna be be really good for me and my team. Right, and you are the king of the miles, as they like to call you. Um, let's also talk about a little more in 2016 for you. You're part of a an advisory group, one of nine elected members. Talk about that being on your plate this season as well. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, it it's kind of like makes you feel feel a little bit special. Um, because you're voted by like everybody in, in the pits basically. And, uh, you know, team owners, riders. Um, so like I didn't do any campaigning to get on this group and me and my team owner, Ricky Howerton, both were elected and kind of unexpectedly really. So it's cool because that means people want to want our opinion, you know, to, to make, uh, to hopefully make the sport better. So our first meetings today down here in Daytona. And I think, uh, I think they got a solid group of guys on the, uh, the advisory board. So I hope it. Uh, I hope basically we can make the sport better, make the racing better, make uh, make the fan experience better, everything. Uh, so that's that's my biggest goal is this make the sport better. And what specifically do you think? Um, what point you're gonna try to make? Um, there's just a couple of funky things with the rules that uh, need to be sorted out for sure. Um, the schedule, you know, what they're gonna do next year. There's talks um, only racing twins. No short tracks. Um, so I, I, I got a lot of questions before there's really answers, honestly. Um, there's a couple things that's got to be sorted out pretty quick, I think. But uh, basically see what their plan is and, uh, you know, talk within our group and hopefully make, uh, make the best call on it. Well, very good. We look forward to seeing what you can bring to the table in 2016. We also look forward to watching you uh, in the championship hunt once again, Brian. We know you got a busy week ahead of you. and We want to thank you for coming on the show. Good luck this season. Yeah, thanks a lot, Danielle, and everybody uh, there. And uh, hopefully talk to you soon with a uh, Daytona win. Yes, yes, sir. We're looking forward to hearing from you. All right, everybody, it's number 42, Brian Smith. Check him out on Instagram. Follow his racing season again this year. We'll be right back after this commercial break.
Hi, I'm David Fisher. Briar Bauman. Brandon Robinson. Brad Baker. Corey Texter. And Kenny Coolbath. Dan Bromley. Shana Texter, and I run Evans Coolant. What I like most about Evans Coolant is I never have to worry about the bike overheating, so we're on, on the line. I uh, don't have to worry about it overheating. In all my years of racing, I've never found a product that gives me the peace of mind to do what it's going to do, like Evans. I run Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Coolin. Gotta have the best to go fast. He took third place at Super Prestigio Barcelona just after winning the inaugural Super Prestigio of the Americas. And he took the 2015 Grand National Championship. He's the number one, Jared Mees. Jared, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks a lot for having me back. Absolutely. We had you just at the end of 2015, but it's always good to see you. You're down in sunny Daytona right now, and after a really strong weekend in Volusia, you said bring on 2016. You sound ready. Yeah, of course. You know, I... Uh... Being almost 30 years old, I've, I've been at it for quite a while now and just kind of know how to prepare myself mentally and physically. And, uh, you know, we've had a good start to the season. Of course, the, the half miles are nothing like the opening rounds of Daytona 1 and 2. But, um, you know, the competition's, of course, as strong as ever. And uh, to come down here and have, you know, some success early is, you know, good for the confidence. And we've learned some stuff. We're trying some different things. And, you um, you know, hopefully we could pick up uh, where we left off from last year. So uh, that's, that's, that, that'd be the great goal. Right. And obviously the target's on your back this year. You had a really strong season uh, in 2015, ended up taking the championship. But it wasn't necessarily easy for that matter. So, um, you know, what do you say to the fact that you're probably the one with the target on your back this year? Oh, definitely. You know, it's it's never winning the champ. It's never easy winning a championship, especially with the talent pool that we have in the AMA flat track. So, and to do it uh, back to back was obviously one of my biggest goals. So to uh, you know to try to to go after three, I know it's going to be as tough as ever. But um, I mean, as far as you know, preparation and and equipment and team, you know, is all the same as what it was uh, the last couple years. So um, you know, I know the, a couple of the race tracks that are coming up are uh, going to suit a couple other riders of style versus mine but um you know we uh we've always seemed to pull it uh pull it out of our uh pull the rabbit out of the hat when we needed to so looking forward to it it's going to be a fun season and um you know there's a couple races definitely that I really want to win this year and uh and get and get past it so uh excited for it honestly well and short tracks aren't necessarily your thing are they well, I mean, I've had some success at Daytona. I've never had a win, but I've had some really, really close uh, second places and, and uh, I've been on the podium. You know, Daytona's, Daytona's pretty hit or miss for everybody. You know, I, I, people's come down here and, and won both days, and then the next year's come down here and barely break the top ten. So uh, you never know what to expect with Daytona. You know, a start's a big thing. Qualifying's a big thing. Um you know, it's you just never know who the big players are. I mean, there's definitely guys that go good, but uh, I feel our chances are as good to win as as anybody. So uh, I'm pretty excited. I'd love to win Daytona. It's not necessarily the uh, the ultimate goal. You know, to come out of here with some really good, valuable points is the ultimate goal and stay clean, but and healthy. But uh, I would really like to win it. This is supposedly the last year for uh, racing the singles everywhere. So, and I never had a singles win. Let Sure. I get a um, singles win this year. Well, obviously, uh, taking a win the first round would be a good way to start the season. Um, Jared, let's just talk about um, kind of the monkey or the elephant in the room, rather. The, it came to a head last year with you and Brian just right there at the end of the season. Everything came down to the line. You ended up taking the win in the championship ultimately. But what's the feeling this year? I mean, you know he's gunning for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like, uh, of course, Brian's going to be tough, but um, there's a lot of other guys that are going to be really tough. You know, I feel like Brad Baker is going to be really strong. Uh, you know, Kenny Coolbeth, although he's he's getting a little up there in age, I feel like he's still as strong as uh, as ever. You know, there's going to be some racetracks where I feel he's going to struggle at. Uh, but we're going to have our struggles, I, I feel like. You know, we're all going to have bad days in racing. You're never going to have a, a perfect a perfect season. 
Um, you know, Brandon Robinson's on our on a really good team this well, and he's shown some strength early on there at Savannah. So, you know, I really feel like uh, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be an interesting year. There's a lot of good guys for a lot of teams. Um, of course, with the miles that keep getting added to the schedule, of course, Brian's going to be um, is going to be as tough as ever because of uh, you know his strength on the miles for sure. But um, you know, it's the AMA Grand National. You gotta you gotta put a whole season together from start to finish. So yes, obviously start to finish, you want to have a very consistent year. You only won one race last year, but ended up taking the whole championship. So it's obviously about consistency. So let's talk about the off season, what you've been up to. How are you prepping for this season? What have you been doing? Well, you know the the AMA Grand National Series got uh, over very late last year. You know, late uh, late November, a week before, you know, four five days before Thanksgiving. So. You know, I got home and enjoyed Thanksgiving and then was on a really quick to Barcelona, Spain for the Super Prestigio out there. And then when we came back home, I had about, uh, I think I had Christmas and then another week off and I was out there in Australia. And then I got back from Australia and I ended up going to California a couple of weeks after that to do some testing for the, for the you know, the opening rounds here at Daytona with uh, Moto Station and Jimmy Wood. So uh, i just been really on the go since November, you know, since we left las vegas i left a couple weeks early prior to las vegas last year like around november 1st to go out there and do some testing so really just been on the go been on the gun um you know of course i, I never really stopped training or working out or you know anything like that i'm really really into being fit and enjoy riding a bicycle and uh and riding motocross whatever rowing whatever, whatever it takes and uh so I never really stopped, but um, it's been a really busy off season. Uh, it's been a fun off season, but really, really busy. So, you know, looking forward to uh, just kind of picking up where I left off, really. You know, I never really got to, to let it settle in or set in. It's just been kind of on the pin. So um, hopefully we'll be doing what I'm rolling. It doesn't sound like much of an off season at all, and it continues this year with obviously the start of the season, but also a few other things. You and your wife Nicole um, are assuming the role of promoter at the Lima Half Mile, but also you're part of the 2016 AMA Pro Advisory Board. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we're I mean we're a part of the advisory board, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be uh, you know the promoters of the Lima Half Mile. Nicole and I, it's um, a special place for a lot of racers, especially her and I. It was our you know basically our hometown race Lima, Ohio. It was actually my first Grand National victory in 2005. And then I backed it up in 2007, I believe 2012. So, uh, you know, it's our 14, sorry. So uh, it's been a, it's been a good, uh, a good place for me. And, um, it's always a real big fan favorite and, uh, it's, and uh, hopefully it was a good, good so pretty excited to uh, be the new promoter of Lima. And remember, last Saturday in June is uh, Lima Half Mile. Very good. And then the advisory board as well. You're happy to take a place at that table? Yeah, you know, I don't know really what to expect just yet with it. Uh, hopefully I can, you know, as well as the other people that are on the board, can play a big toll to make flat track better. But, um, you know, we'll see how it, uh, how it comes for sure. I'm, I'm excited for the opportunity. It's just uh, see what, what, what presents itself really. Well, we're excited to watch you this season, Jared. I'm sure you'll add great things to that advisory board. Uh, but we're most excited to watch you defend your number one plate. We wanted to wish you the best of luck after a great weekend uh, in Volusia and uh, the best of luck this weekend in Daytona. Hey, thanks a lot. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be uh, hopefully a great season and uh, try, to, try to keep it mixed up. Right. Keep it interesting. Very good. Well, guys, this is Jeremy, number one play. He's defending his title this year. Follow him on Instagram for great picks, And we'll be right back after this commercial break. Just a quick word before we let you go. American Michael Aquino has an opportunity to race in Spain in the Repsol CEV Moto2 Championship. Help his racing dreams come true by donating to his GoFundMe account. More information can be found on his personal Facebook page or by going directly to his GoFundMe account. 
Thanks again for tuning in for another great show. Tune in to FansChoice.tv and AMAProRacing.com all season for up to speed AMA Pro flat track coverage. Download the WNDD app to hear our good friend Barry Boone give you live updates from Daytona all week. Be sure to tune in for more this season, including your favorite racers, fast products, Moto America, and AMA Pro flat track coverage. Don't forget to join the over 10,000 others and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Join our newsletter and get the show and more straight in your inbox each Friday. We look forward to a great season with you and for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. We look forward to a great season with you, and for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. Done. Let's take a quick commercial break and thank some sponsors. Take 20.